so under glazing your spoons, um, we did a quick rinse, um, and now these are really porous once they're bisqued, so it's already dry, ready to go. The reason that we bisque our pots is one, to turn them from clay into ceramics. So now this can't be watered down and turned back into clay. This is permanent for thousands of years. Um, the other reason is so that when we're under glazing and glazing them, they're more durable. They're still breakable, but you know, before if I did that, it would have broke, um, and now it's fine. Okay, so those are the two reasons why we bisque our things. Um, for underglazing, in the underglazing cabinet, you're gonna find this bowl. This is pretty much all the colors that we have. Um, this shows what they'll look like when they have clear glaze over them. For an example, this teal looks like this now, but it's a lot more vibrant and darker once it has a clear over it, okay? Um, it also has, your underglazes have numbers on them. So we have 308 here. It's kind of obvious because this is the only yellow, but go to the yellow, the number corresponds with the number on here. Um, this has two functions. It's going to show you what it looks like with clear glaze over it and without clear glaze over it. These are kind of cool because you can use them either way, um, which this is a really cool kind of matte surface. But let me tell you this, if you're going to use water on it or, or food, you have to have clear glaze on it. Okay. So with that said, is this, would this be food safe? Yes, because wherever we're going to put food on it has a clear glaze. We're not going to eat off this side, okay? So you can kind of play around with it as you're going um, um, with future projects. This is an example of what it looks like if you only put one coat of underglaze on. Generally speaking, you want four coats of underglaze. So one coat, it's going to look really nice like this when you do it after one coat. But when you fire it and clear glaze it, it's going to end up looking like this. Now, that might be a look that you like and that you're going for a fine. But if you want it to be nice and solid, you want to do um, the three to four coats, which is like this area. You have to pay attention and make sure you're keeping track of how many coats you put on. If you put on too many coats, like more is not better in this case. If you put on like, oh, I want this to be really cool, I'm going to put on 20 coats well, that will then get bubbly and mess up in the kiln, okay? So with the lighter colors, I like to say four or five coats. With the darker colors, you're probably fine with four coats. Um, okay, so that's what those two are. Underglazes give us um, a lot of options. Um, we can put on four coats and have it be nice and opaque. We can blend and shade like the sphere, just like you would do with paint. Um, you can even add water to your underglaze to get that kind of watercolor effect. Okay, so lots of different options um, just with this one product. So for the spoons, I've chosen a flat brush. It's the biggest one that we have um, because I'm going to want to um, paint this quickly. Can you go to the end of ways cabinet and give, grab me a palette? So here's the underglazes that I've chose to use. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure the lid's on, and then I'm going to shake it up. Shake it up 30 to 40 times so it's nice and mixed. Why did I make sure the lid's on? Anybody? Yeah, it happens every year to at least one person. Don't be that person. What happens is somebody will like not put the lid on all the way, and then the next person comes and doesn't check the lid and they go like this and it's all over them, it's all over everything, okay? So always make sure you check that lid before you shake it. So check the lid, shake it. When I open these, I like to open them over the floor because these little crusties kind of fall off and I don't want it falling into my workspace. If you are just doing a pot with this one color, you're more than welcome to just do this. As long as you don't have like black on here that you're going to contaminate this okay but for this um for my spoons i want to kind of mix and blend some colors so i'm going to use a palette just a little bit at a time you can always go back and get more it's very difficult to put this back in here okay so don't fill up you know all of your spots 
especially these tiny spoons don't do much. So again, over the floor. And now I'm ready to start. I have my big brush, flat brush. You want to move quickly and you want to make sure these coats are even. I wouldn't want to stop there because see how I have kind of puddles. I want to make sure all those puddles are brushed out. And I'm working quickly because it dries so fast. If I don't work quickly, it's going to look uneven after I get my all my coats on. Again, always make sure that you're looking at all different angles so you're not missing anything. Again, you can see, I'm just double checking to make sure I don't have any puddles. You can see how quickly it dries. Make sure you get inside that hole. Okay, so there's my first coat. Um, for the second coat, just give this a second to dry. I'm gonna add a little yellow in there. I could mix, mix a new color in here, like so. Um, while this is drying, I'm, I'm gonna explain some things. You can use this just like paint. So if you consider yourself a painter or, or you really like painting or drawing, um, I mean, you could essentially paint a portrait of a person realistic looking on this pot, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so an option, you can mix two colors, or I kind of like to just mix it on the pot, and I kind of want this kind of ombre look, so I'm going to put that yellow on. Again, I'm trying to make sure it's all smoothed out. I'm working quickly so that I can blend this teal in there. This is my second coat, like so. You guys would make sure this is dry. For demo's sake, I'm gonna keep going. Okay. So, imagine I do that four more times. Got it? Um, so here's one that I've done four times. Um, there's lots of different techniques you can use. One that I really like is taking a damp sponge. So I'm gonna squeeze this all the way out. There's no water dripping out anymore. And I kind of like that shabby sheet kind of worn look. So I can take this sponge and just kind of knock off some of the underglaze on my texture. Can you guys see that? Just to kind of give it a, a worn look. Okay, so that's one technique. You can also um, take a smaller brush and you know, fill in some of this. some of your designs. Now let me tell you this. It's always best to work light colors first and then build up to your darker colors, which I am not doing here. I'm starting with a darker color and now I'm trying to put yellow, which is a really light color, over a darker color. Um, the yellow is not gonna be really vibrant because I'm doing that. Um, although I want my spoon to be teal, so that's how it is. Um, if you want your spoon to like say be black with white polka dots on it, talk to me and I'll give you some special directions of how to achieve that. Um, but generally speaking for this project, start light and move up to dark. Got that? Let me explain to you also that our clay is this nice cream color. So you do not have to paint the background color if you don't want to. Maybe you're just gonna um, underglaze your designs on and keep this nice cream color as your background color. That's an option too. Questions about that? Um, when you are totally done with your spoon, you're gonna take it, well you tell me, where are you gonna take it? What are you gonna do with it? You're totally done with it. Yes, we're gonna fire these. So normally we fire pots two times, that bisque firing and that glaze firing. But for this underglaze, we are going to put it through an extra firing, an underglaze firing. And back in the back in the cart, um, there's a sign for glaze, a sign for bisque, 
and a sign for underglaze firing. The reason why we want to underglaze fire these um, before we glaze them is once it goes through the kiln again, this color will be permanent. It won't be able to be washed off. That way when I dip it in that watery glaze, it will be protected. If I went and tried to dump that, dip this in the watery glaze today, and I had all this design work on it, it would probably get blurry and smear and get messed up. Okay, so we're putting this through an extra firing and underglaze firing before we glaze them. Questions about that? Okay, any questions in general? Let's see if I forgot anything. Um, we'll post this video so that you can review it because obviously some of you won't be working on this for a few days. Okay, all right, thank you.